prepare for Adam Adamant, uh, I drink nothing but Lapsang Souchong for a month leading up to the recording. Adam Adamant, Adam Adamant. Adam Adamant is a gentleman adventurer uh, who was born in the Edwardian era but finds himself thrust into the 1960s and he awakes uh, in the middle of a road, finds himself in a horrific accident and then has to acclimatise uh, to the modern world of the 1960s. Adam is a bifurcated personality. He has a kind of, there's the face, which is his kind of the physical manifestation of his deepest, darkest self-loathing uh, is one character and there's Adam. And this season there is a third voice where Milligan is trying to persuade him that he was actually a different character again. So there's almost three aspects to Adam. So it's very fun vacillating between the different voices. Of horns and brakes. Ah! Alone on the tarmac of the road and great and by great. A man out of time waiting to die a century too late. Well, Big Finish came to do Adam Adamant really because of Big Finish listeners who we do listen to. And a lot of people kept writing in about it over the years. Not sort of thousands and thousands, but there was a sort of uh, uh, a significant trickle of uh, emails about it, saying, why don't you do that? Don't you? And my initial idea was to do it myself, but I just didn't have the time. So I wanted to find a writer who would grab it with both hands and who would um, have a take on it. And then I did speak to a number of writers, but when I spoke to Guy about it, when we were talking about something else, he really had that look in his eyes where he thought, ah, ah, and he was immediately starting to tell me things that he could do with it. Oh, and we could, ah, that would be interesting. If you're going to do a new version of it, there has to be a reason you're doing a new version of it, rather than just sort of exhuming it and making it dance for your pleasure. That you know, let's bring it back to life. It occurred to me that it might be slightly more interesting if we never really know if Adam Adamant is an Edwardian adventure that was somehow frozen and then woke woke up in the modern day, or if he is someone who just thinks he is. And does that matter? Uh, I thought that was potentially much more interesting in a way. And he really has has definitely reimagined it. It's not just a carbon copy. All the essential things are there, like man from 1902 in 1966, uh, crime fighting, Georgina Jones, Sims, the essential things are there, but you know, we don't know quite how he got to be where he is. Or maybe even there's a question over his identity and all that has come from Guy. I personally hadn't heard of it. And I, um, I remember I mentioned to my dad, you know, we had a catch up. He was like, what are you up to? And I said, oh, I'm recording this for Big Finish. He was so excited because that is, you know, it's something that he used to watch and he enjoyed. And I think that's the joy of Big Finish. You know, the, you can dig out these, these gems from the past and, and, and bring them back to life in a way that, you know, that sort of unifies everybody. And the other thing I wanted to change, it sounds like I'm being critical of the, the original show, and I, I don't mean to be, but the, it's, it's handling of Georgina, I was going to say it was of its time, but in some ways it, it wasn't even quite of its time. The Avengers was doing a, a, a better job. Um, Georgina exists to get captured. She, it, it's, it's, it's a proper step back as, as a female role. So I was just very determined to make sure that our Georgina, if you're going to hand a role to an actor, you want them to be well served by it. So hopefully we, we've managed to do that with Georgina. Guy's really given a new lease of life on it. I feel like she's a character who is interested, interesting, and also able to pick and choose her ideologies as they suit her. It's not fully prescriptive. She doesn't subscribe to the Victorian idea of, you know, what a woman should be. And so I find her really, really refreshing. I think in a way the, the first series really shows Adam thrust into the 1960s, very much fish out of water. Where we arrive in the second season, he's a, he's a little more familiar with how the world works. He's not altogether um, supportive of, of the newfangled technology and the cacophony of noise, but uh, he's at least a little more familiar with it. Quite a different tone with the second season. The first season seems a little more kind of light, and I think this season is, is a lot darker, certainly following the death or the purported death 
uh, of Georgina. Calling with Blake and Guy is a joy. I'll take the mic now that I've said that, but it's true. I, I really, I do really, really enjoy it because it's quite rare that for something like this, you actually get to spend time with the people you're recording with. It's a very sort of singular process. You're alone in a booth with your headphones on and you know, you're not making contact with any other actors. And so to have them there, you know, pulling the odd face through the glass and stuff, it really, it really helps. Working with the other cast members is delightful. I mean, it's a, it's quite a small cast of people. Uh, we know each other quite well now, so that's, familiarity is always immensely helpful. And it's, it's a very jolly atmosphere, I would say. It's very light, um, ludic, playful. Ultimately, I, uh... Our version of Adam Advent Lives it exists as its own own thing. If you're a fan of the original show, I very much hope you're going to like uh, our version of it. But in no way was it written as a, a continuation of the original, as, um, as, as, as as something that's just for fans of the original. As far as we're concerned, this is a new series. This is this is a thing we're making uh, that we want as many people as possible, please, because we love making it uh, to come and listen and, and, and enjoy.